Welcome to Inside Out Boys with your host, Cody Bass. Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. Big hello to the new subscribers, thank you for stopping in and joining us. Alright T, we are still coming along with and we are going to get back on this 1978 Johnson 6 horsepower 2 stroker. Uh, got mostly all the broke did parts replaced with at least functional parts and uh, so I think we're ready to start going back up with it for the most part as far as getting the power head and clean up the uh, electronics, the coils and power pack and stuff like that and get that all buttoned back up hook up our new tiller linkage and all and see if that's going to work out okay and uh, so I say let's get back on this little bit little bitty cutie it's a cutie it's a cutie let's look okay now if you'll set your engine on its head now keep in mind you're gonna have the power head in there but it don't matter just turn it upside down have the cowling off and set it on the flywheel and then you'll be able to have enough room to come in here you can see I just got a pair of needle nose stuck right here with the handle to hold it open where I can see the shift link and with a flashlight you can also not only see the shift link and that it's engaged you can see the water tube okay and then you're gonna have to turn the propeller and get the, the pin to line up with the two slots so that it'll drop all them down. Now what you want to do is the slots that are bossed in that leg of the outboard just beneath the power head, they run this way. Alright, just like that. So you're going to set, spin the propeller with it in forward gear until you've got the pin going crosswise and then stab it down in there like this first and make sure it's going to go all the way flush and touch the two pieces will touch together then you know you got your slot lined up then ease it back up like this line up your shift link line up your water tube and like I said take a piece of wood some plier handles or whatever hold it open so that you can see with a flashlight down in there that your water tubes on and that your shift link is correct with the indent. Okay, I wanted to, here's the end of the drive shaft. I wanted to be able to show you that the pin's in there, but because I put anises on the sides of it, I don't think you're gonna be able to see it. But anyway, I'll tilt you that way. You can see one ear of the pin sticking out right there. The other one's got anises on it. But the pin's in there, and then I gave it a quarter turn. And, of course, if you were just doing an impeller water pump, you wouldn't see any of that. Um, and then I put me a coat of the extreme high heat gasket sealer on there. Now, the order again. Now on the bottom there's two little dimples, two little holes that have dimples on it. That slides, this, this is your brass cup. It goes in first, then the spring, then the carbon ceramic or whatever it is holds the other part of the spring. Then there's your O-ring right there. That wearing black gloves your o-ring that fits into the top of that carbon deal there we go slide that down make sure I see it go in there there we go we're getting that there we go then your thick metal washer with your cork facing up 
There it is. And the mystery behind this thing, the best I can explain it, is it's, it, it's sealing off the lower crank case chamber is what I guess we could call this area right here and the bottom of the crank case. And I would think that that pin just kind of free floats in there in in the two in between the two cups the brass and the carbon those little dimples you can't see it but in the down at the bottom of that there are holes i think there's four of them and those little dimples on that brass cup will get caught in those will get set is a better way to say it set for the most part in them little dimples or in them little holes <laughs> oh boy and then the spring tension and all from the power head setting down and the lower unit pushing up creates a tension spring area in there and for the most part keeps that area dry boy I, I, I hope you understood any of that anyway let me get a power head I'll be hey you guys know what it means when I wear the hat. It means somebody came up bearing them gifts. It's Christmas in February. Let's go look.
there they are. We've got us a 35 and a 25. And the 25 has the starter bracket and all that. Let's see. This one's a 1990, it's an EF. Ooh, the creepy crawlies are there, I see them there. They're in there. This one turns over. The creepy crawlies. And this one, oh boy, let's see if I can see, get a flat bit. I think it says CR, which would put it about 84, I think. So a 1990 electric start. got the rectifier everything this one here I'm not a hundred percent sure but yeah this is an 84 um, they both pull over. The pull start may not work, but the engines. Ooh, that one's got good compressiones. So does that one. You see them creepy crawlies? They're in there. He's been sitting a while. You see him right there? Ugh, there, I killed that one. Oh, that yuck comes squishing. There's probably more of them in there. Ooh, they're gonna get me. It's pretty dirty, but it's complete. Turns over. Um, can't tell if it shifts or not. And this other one's complete. Turns over. Got nice looking propellers on them. Sorry, it's really cloudy out here. Look at all the creepy crawlies in that. Oh my. Uh -huh. They're in there, they're up under there. Yuck. They're gonna get me. Yeah, them creepy crawly. Get off it. But, a 35 and a 25. Go. And it's got, in addition to the creepy crawlies, it's got the old Kodiak green moss. It there we go. You can see they've been sitting. Got the old green moss. 
in here, up here. But hey, they both turn over. Nice 25 and a nice 35. They're in actually pretty good shape. Minus them creepy crawlies and some mold and some rust and some crust and some dirt. And this one, if you notice, is not a tiller handle. I got that lid on there wrong. But it's going to be a tiller handle. What did I do? What did I do? Somewhere there's a slot in there. I think that got it. I still missed it. <laughs> That's alright for right now. But there they are. There they are. Johnson's. There they be. Nice pair. Up to Johnson. Okay, I had uh, a subscriber ask about, he thought that uh, when it was in the tank and I ran it the first time, <clears throat> he thought he might have heard some rod knock or something in um, coming from the engine, which on video somebody might be able to pick something like that up that I can't hear standing right over the tank. So um, I'll do a real quick uh, lash test on this thing and it's pretty simple all you do is take something like a screwdriver a dial rod something that's got a little all right you turn the motor over and you can see the pistons going down now it's coming back up okay the pistons coming up this is in the top cylinder it's coming up now the pistons starting to go down once it starts to make its travel downward Give the flywheel a couple inches a turn. Then what you're going to do is take your screwdriver, put on the top of the piston, and then when it comes up to top dead center and you start going back down, if there was any slop in there, it would stretch it all out as the piston comes down and the rings compress in the cylinder. And while it's stretched all out like that, that's when you take your screwdriver and hold the flywheel and shove it. And if there was slop in there, you'd hear a clunk. Okay, that's the top cylinder. It's good. There's no, no play in it at all. Okay. Here's the bottom. We're coming up. Coming up. Coming up. Starting to go back down. Stretch that piston out good. Get your screwdriver, put in there on top of the piston, and again, I heard no noise. So the lash on these two pistons and the con rods and the journals and everything are fine. Um, it was probably just the rattling and shaking in my tank and so forth. But that's how you do a quick lash test on your journals, crank, um, connecting rods and your wrist pins and so forth. And I've had them where they've had rod slop where I do this test and you'll get a good quarter inch in there. And if that's the case, you're going to have to pull the cylinder head apart, and the, the halves, and you're going to have to find out where that slop is, whether it's the bearings on the, um, on the crank journal or the wrist pin or whatever. But this one's good to go.
Okay, here's the bracket that came off. You see how it comes to like a point and this one flares out. So I think this is off like an old 10 horse Gale 12, something like that is what that's off. But there's the broken part right there. And I have all those pieces and I will weld that up. Um, this was in my bone pile so I went ahead and used that one. But I have the other two pieces and I'll set up my welder and uh, for aluminum and weld that. So I had to move the uh, fuel quick connect over to this side because that's where the hole was for it where it mounts to the tiller bracket. Um, then we just cleaned everything up dewey 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 and all that. But now I'm gonna share another little print with you. This had to be one of the worst or is one of the worst carboned up little kickers I've come across in a long while. I mean everything in that in that motor um, it was just full of, of black sooty carbon. So when I pulled the power head and everything and I took the T-stat out of this little motor um, I got to thinking about it and I was like I wonder because I knew this T-stat was all salty, corroded, and everything, and I was like, I'm wondering if it was frozen the open position so that it would only, you know, it would never come up to temp. Um, it would run cold and not burn all the oil that's mixed in with the gas. Um, and that could possibly be why it's so carboned up and everything. But I looked at the T-stat real good, and it's closed. I mean, it's plugged as good as they come, so if anything, I think the engine would have ran hotter than it should. So, I don't know if you can see that, but she's good and sealed closed. I don't see no light through it or nothing. Now, it's just a chunk of salt, but it's a chunk of closed salt. You understand? Now, this engine is peeing. There's water discharge coming out of the tail tail and the blubber holes. There are two little blubber holes down lower. But I'm not going to get in a hurry to put um, a T-stat in this motor. What I'm going to do is over the next several days I'm going to come down here in my tank and run this thing for a good 10-15 minutes. Um, and in my tank I have salt away and so forth nitric acid mixture in there and everything hopefully that'll clean some of that carbon and everything out of there out of the leg and stuff and uh, so that's my plans with it because it is just and I probably will do a decarb on the thing I'll probably get some sea foam rig me up a little I don't have to rig me up get my little I got a little one gallon tank that I'll mix up with a half gallon of gas and uh, a bottle of sea foam, and then I'll put it in my spray bottle and while it while I'm revving it. It's typically something I do about dark, because if there's a mosquito within a hundred miles of here, he's going to die. So it's uh, something I do at night because of the amount of smoke it creates. But this little motor needs it. It is full of carbon. It runs really good. A uh, little power head just purrs. It, it runs really good, but it needs a decarb. It needs to be run really good uh, over a few days after the decarb and get this little thing cleaned out. But uh, she's all back together. Came out pretty nice. So, got a little bit of stuff to do to it on the bonnet, the hood, and stuff. That's all cosmetic. Um, so, we got this little cutie squared away and ready to get back to work. And that's what it needs to do after well we're not there yet but we're we're for the most part done with it other than running it and circulating it and get it going so it's getting a little late i want to thank you for watching us videos here and uh so as always that is one more hack from kodiak thanks for watching Please like, share, and subscribe to Inside Outlaws with your host, Cody.